What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. We're just out on a dual hub bike with the dual Bafang beard hub motors. We're going a different way today. I want to, I, so I welded the clutch in my Bafang motor. Which allows you to do regen braking. And I want to go try the regen braking in more of like a trail riding environment. Because I, I think that the, the regen braking could be very useful and valuable. Even when you're not on the road necessarily, I think it could work pretty good on a trail too. So I'm going to go try that out today. This isn't exactly a trail riding setup. I've got big smoothie tires on, so they're street tires. They are fat tires, so we'll still have some traction. Wow, it's windy. It's pretty hot out today. Let's see. Get that part out. Alright, so yeah, it's pretty hot out today, like the 80s. Kind of sticky. So, with these temperatures, we are also testing the vent holes that I've drilled in my motor. We're monitoring the motor temperatures with the thermistor that is inside of the motor, right by the windings, so that we know how hot the motor's getting. We're just going to go down this road past the winery, which will be right here on our right. And then we're going to be at the trail in just a few minutes here. And we're going to try regen out on the trail. The motor is at 63C. I didn't use my bike's brakes at all right there. That was all regen braking. All right, so let's talk about regen braking. The trail is right down here. So I've been aware, I've been aware of this whole like weld the clutch and do regen with the Bafang motor thing for a while and I just never tried it. And one of the reasons that I never tried it is I, I just thought, well, it's all about the charging. It's all about the regenerative charging and it's when you're on an e-bike the charging the amount that regen braking charges back into the battery isn't like a mind-boggling amount it's not a crazy huge amount of recharging going back into the battery In my preliminary testing, it is about a little over 10%. It really depends on where you're riding, obviously. Um, but the, I think the bottom line, so here's the thing. Like there's a lot of comments and I see, it's kind of like when you show people something cool on YouTube or the internet or whatever and they see it, it's almost like they they kind of want it, 
But then they're playing de devil's advocate, and it's like they're trying to think of reasons why they don't want it. Like they're so whether it's like devil's advocate or just looking at both sides of an issue. One of the arguments against regen has been, well, when you're on an e-bike, there's not a whole lot of weight, right? Like you're when you're doing regen braking, you're taking advantage of that kinetic energy of your bike moving and all of the weight from you know the kinetic energy from the weight and the speed of your bike getting up to that speed well you know everything that starts moving has to come to a stop at some point and so at some point you're going to have to brake somehow right so braking is something that we all need on our e-bikes um and i think that's kind of the thing that people people miss out on like people are just too they're when they're thinking about regen, they're thinking about, well, it's all about the charging and it's all about that energy going back into the battery. But so 10%, like, let's say I have a 20 amp hour battery and I run that thing down the whole way. I, I, I use the whole battery. I know that's bad, but let's just use it as an example. Let's say we have got a 20 amp hour battery and we get 10% back from regen. So at the end of if you if you if you go on that ride and use the whole 20 amp hours just for illustration purposes at the end of that ride at your normal ride that you're used to you would have charged 10 percent back in there so that's two amp hours right so if you're using 20 amp hours on a ride but then you're getting 10 percent back so you're gonna have you're going to have 10% more in your battery every time that you come back from a ride, right? And it's not about how, it's not about how far can that 10% get you extra. Think about it like this. Every time that you get back from a ride, you're going to have 10% more in your battery than if you wouldn't have had regen, right? So... The more that you have in your battery at the end of a ride, the better it is for your battery, your battery's health and lifespan. So even if you're charging the battery up with regen while you're riding it, and you're not taking advantage of that range and using that range, that's still amp hours or watt hours that are going back into your battery that are gonna be there when you get back. And that's good for your battery, right? So that's that's one thing. Even though it's it's not a lot, it's still, good just maybe maybe not like you know like maybe maybe the extra 10 percent you can't ride that much further with that much energy especially on a dead battery like your bike just isn't going very fast anyways things are slowing down when you're getting towards the end of your battery but with a little bit of extra regen you know your, your voltage is just going to be slightly higher you're always going to have just a little bit more in your battery than you would have right so then the other thing about regen that I think people are confused about is the way that I have this set up is like when I let go of the throttle right now, it's kind of like a Tesla, I think. I've never I've never drove a Tesla, but I think like on a Tesla, when you let off of the accelerator, the regen just kind of engages and it kind of breaks automatically that way. Right? So I think that like since I and I it, it works pretty good, it's a different experience. But I, I like it. You kind of have to ride differently. <sighs> On a bike, you might be used to coasting a lot. But then if you set regen up like I have it right now, more like an EV, like a Tesla, where you hit the throttle to go, but then you let up off of the throttle and the braking gently engages as you're letting up off the throttle. So instead of the throttle just being like this thing that says, go, you know, and then letting go of the throttle just means you're coasting like now it says okay when you push the throttle that means means go but when you're easing up off of the throttle that means start braking and then if you totally let off of the throttle with the regen set up like this that's like slamming on the regen brake right so and i think that this can work just fine um some people some people have been asking can you feel it when you're pedaling 
and when like if i'm so if i have the throttle set up like this where the where when i let go of the throttle the regen is just on then yes like if you're not hitting the throttle at all and that regen is on then it's like you're trying to pedal with the brakes on in your bike right so i'm still i don't use pedal assist a lot of people have been asking me um how do you hook the flip ski up the pedal assist i don't use pedal assist I just think it's dangerous. I think if you're using pedal assist, there should be a torque sensor. Um, I'm not, I don't use the cadence sensor pedal assist. I'm just too clumsy and it's dangerous. Like I always, I always accidentally hit the, hit the cranks and then my bike goes like speeding across the garage and crash, like crashing into my car or whatever. So I, I don't use pedal assist. I'm going to try and figure it out and see I think what you do is you would get the pedal assist cadence sensor, you would wire it up to like ADC2 or something, you would wire it up to a different input on the flip ski, and then you would configure that ADC2 input for pedal assist. But I've never done that before, I mean stay tuned, I'll figure it out, we'll figure it out. It's not my highest priority because I don't use pedal assist. But So if the regen brake is engaged, then yeah, it feels like pedaling with your brakes on. but like it is possible to weld the clutch and not have the regen braking engaged right the regen is something that you can you control with an input right you can control it and it's not just on or off like you it's like a you could use a whole throttle just for the regen to control the intensity of the regen right so you can set the regen up to break depending on whatever input you want Right, so just keep that in mind. So, with how I have it, with how I have it set up right now, if I want to pedal, I do have to hit the throttle just a little bit, kind of like just to get through the throttle's dead band and start giving it just a little bit of power to tell the motor that yes, I want to go and to stop that braking. But you can still pedal the bike. It's welding the clutch. It was such a heavy bike with these fat tires, and I got 16 ounces of flat out in the tube. It was such a heavy bike to pedal to begin with that welding that clutch didn't make a whole lot of difference, right? So people have been wondering about that. I mean, like some of those things, like to me, it's not about, it's not a, it's not so much about that, the charge that's going back in there, like it's gonna allow you to go further. But the thing that's valuable, that's valuable about the regen is that you're going to have more left in your battery after every ride, and it's good for your battery, right? And then, so for me, the regen, the main thing about regen is the braking. So let's, we're going to go to this park. There's like a little path that goes through the woods. Um, there's maybe people walking around on it. It's not like a high speed, high intensity thing. Got to be careful. But we're just going to see how the regen braking works in more of like a trail setting because you do a lot of braking on trails like there's a lot of like up and down like little inclines so we're gonna go try out this regen on a trail and actually guys one other thing that i like about having the regen mapped to the throttle like this is that when you're not on the throttle there's kind of like a brake engage and it's almost like a parking brake almost but I kind of like it. I kind of like how when you're not on the throttle, the brake is engaged because your bike, it just like helps you control the bike a little bit when you're not on it. But anyways, <coughs> so let's go, let's go try this regen on the trail. I'm going to try and make it appear as if I'm doing, I will be doing some pedaling. It does help in these kind of situations. Where did my gloves go? I feel naked without my gloves. So what I'm gonna do here is I can go into the stats and I can reset I can reset the trip here. I think. Reset, reset. I'm pushing the reset button. I don't know that it's resetting. 
So let's let's enable real-time data logging. Let's reset it. Let's enable it again. So started logging. Okay. Oops. <coughs> All right. So I'm going to get in the mindset of a trail rider. I'm going to pedal my legs. Use my legs to pedal. Some friendly people. All right, here we are. Getting her in a low gear. Okay, we're going up. Pedaling. Okay guys, we're out on the trail. It just started, like we just went around one corner. GoPro's overheating, I'm glad I looked down or I would have, I would have been very disappointed if, <clears throat> if I rode around without, with the GoPro off. Okay, so we're out on the trail. We haven't got to any spots where we've tested the regen yet. But when you're on trails, Quite often, you need to slow down. And <clears throat> it uses your brakes a lot. I was actually surprised. The first time I took my BBS HD mid-drive out on like a trail riding scenario, I went through like a whole set of brake pads and like a whole cassette in one day. And I was like, geez. It, trail riding can really, like, you, you, you go on your brakes hard, a lot. So that's why I want to see what it's like. Hopefully we got a good view going and it didn't overheat again. Yeah, let's see. We're still going. We're in the shade. It should be able to... All right guys, we're back on the trail with regen on my Bafang hub motor, testing it out in a trail setting. Um, the, the GoPro overheated again. So this is gonna be kind of like a discombobulated ride through the woods where I'm trying to test out and demonstrate regen braking. So let's just keep going here. I'm pedaling along. Oh. Pedaling along, maybe we should engage the front motors a little bit. Oh. Selectively. Oh, selective, oh, engagement. Gaining some altitude, and we can test out the regen if the GoPro is still on. Let's see, GoPro, GoPro, buddy, yeah. Right. All right, here's where we get to test out some regen. GoPro, don't fail me. Regenerating. Okay. Yeah, see, I didn't hit my bike's brakes at all right there. So there's more hill right here. Regenerating. Oh, 
So I did not use bike brakes at all. Oh. All right, let's carry on. Yeah, so when you have these things doing regen, it's almost like you don't even need brakes on your bike. <clears throat> GoPro, are you still going? We're still regenerating. Okay, let's keep going, GoPro. I love you. All right, here we go. Regen. Regenerating. I think that might have been... Yeah, I should have maybe worn some longer pants. Oh. Motor's at 90, wow. These big old 26 inch fat tires warm up out on a trail, buddy. You can, you know when the front motor's going because you can just hear it kicking dirt. So the thing about regen, especially when you have it like this, map to the throttle where you can just let off the throttle and the regen kicks on, is like I don't even I don't even have to move my fingers or touch the brake levers to brake. It's just like natural. Like you, it's either like you're going or you want to slow down. It's like forward or backwards. It's something that's different that you'd have to that you gotta get used to. But like watch this. Like I'll just get cruise in here and then regenerating. That I didn't I didn't grab my brakes at all. I was ready to, but I didn't grab them. That was all regen around that corner. So I guess the regen on these hub motors is even stronger than the direct drive hub motors, just because of like all the gearing and the reduction. You can really feel it. Like it is when I'm going fast and I slam on the regen, it feels like slamming on my Shimano MT210s. except it's using like mechanical gearing to slow you down instead of um, instead of burning down a little tiny brake pad that costs $10. I'm not sure what that noise is. There's some kind of an annoying noise. It's kind of annoying, but I think it's just stuff getting kicked up by my tires and there's, we can't do much about that. It's pretty wet out here. GoPro, are you still going buddy? Yes. So the trick with GoPro is you got to have like a bunch of batteries <clears throat> and then it's the battery that's overheats, not the GoPro. So if you stick a different bat, if it overheats and you stick a different battery in there, what is that noise? If your GoPro overheats, just stick a different battery in it. <clears throat> and it seems like well, that's the best way to keep going
All right, <clears throat> so we made it through there. Motor got pretty hot. GoPro is still going, but I know that it needs a new battery, so I need to do that quick. It says it's at 10%. All right, so we did, we went around it once. We're gonna turn around and go back. But so far, here's the stats. So, I wanna keep moving though. We'll, I'll do something in the, in the editing room and we'll look at those stats. We gotta keep this thing moving. <clears throat> <clears throat> so I don't know how much of my GoPro cut out earlier. I might be repeating myself. I apologize if I am, but I'm just gonna say what I said earlier and kind of talk about why I like this. And the main reason it's not about the charging, it's more about the braking and being able to brake without your bike's brake pads. And it, like with these geared hub motors, it's strong braking. When you have the regen, and I don't even have it set. You could set it even stronger, the regen. I think I have mine set. I think I have the regen set to, let's see. Under motor current, it's set to 60 what we've got it at right now. And then motor, my motor current max is set to 75. Um, let's just try 80. I haven't tried 80 yet for the, the motor, the phase amps. It's just slightly higher than 75. So motor temp is 79. I just, I just like the regen for the braking. It, it, it's, it works really well. Oh. Got a hold of that log, no problem. With the 80 phase amps, baby. So we're gonna go back up this way and there's more. Uh, we'll be able to test out the region going down some of these hills again. We do have dual motors on here, but I don't want to rip around through here too recklessly and anger people. So it's starting to get windy too. Like we're going to go through this trail and then probably go back. But it, it was as I expected, boys. The regen, like right now, we're just kind of slowly breaking with regen. Hopefully my GoPro is still filming. Let's see here. GoPro? Hello? Hello? Yes, I love you GoPro. So somebody in the comments was saying you're not supposed to use regen to come to a full stop. I'm curious why that is. Because it works pretty good, the braking. 
Like that's, like I, I knew it was gonna do braking and I knew it was gonna do some regen charging. But then when I got going like 40 miles an hour and I just slammed on the regen and I saw like negative 2000 watts, I was, and it was just like, just as strong as my hydraulic brakes. I was pretty impressed because one of, I mean, the main thing, the main maintenance thing that you have to do with an e-bike is taking the wheel off to put new brake pads on. And that's kind of a chore. And when you have a big fat tire bike and a heavy bike, you go through brake pads. I have my I have my hand on the rear brakes, but I'm not I'm barely I'm barely using it. Like I've been telling you when I use the brakes. But yeah, so just the braking and not having to use your bike's physical brake pads. Because especially if you have mechanical brakes on your bike, they're so annoying. Like after every ride, the mechanical brakes, you gotta adjust them. <clears throat> I like both sides of them individually, you know? So if you have mechanical brakes on your bike and you're kind of like, dang, I want, I need some better brakes on my bike. You might not even have to buy, you, like you might be able to get away with regen. Like if you have this regen on a gear hub, you don't even need hydraulic brakes. Like the cable brakes would be like, okay, fine. Like you only have to use them once in a while, you know? But, so I mean, typically I use like the Shimano MT-210s. You can get, you know, a set of them pre-bled with the hose and everything like ready to put on your bike. You can get the set for, you know, like 30 to $50, depending on the AliExpress deals. But I mean, like the braking is crazy. I'm not even using my bike's brakes, really. Unless just all of a sudden there's some unexpected situation where you have to absolutely like lock up both of them so like so right here regen like basically stopped me so it's it's slowing me down here allowing me to roll slowly I was hitting my bike's brakes there. Sometimes it's, I just forget I have regen and I'm just like instinctually hitting the brakes. You can hear the brakes squealing when I'm hitting the bike's brakes. You can hear it. Oh, this is regen. So I think even, even riding something like this, like there's a lot of slowing down, accelerating and slowing down and accelerating, especially if you're on a trail and you're trying to ride the trail faster, you know, like, still going. Wow. So let's see what we got here.
All right, guys, we're up at the top of the, the summit trail or something. I don't know. We're up at the top. So we just got up here. The big smoothie tires are all muddy and whatever. I just tightened the axle nuts. This regen is crazy. It makes the axles go like, like this in the dropouts. So you need some really, really, really good torque arms like the Grin Tech V7 Regen Torque Arm. Link in the description. That's the torque arm that you want if you want to do regen with one of these motors. But I've been able to hodgepodge together an assortment of other torque arms that are holding it on there for now. So that's what we're doing. So let's get this screen recording starting back, started back up. Courtesy of GoPro. Three, two, one, go. All right, so the motor temp is 96, boys. We're up at the top. We're up at the top. Motor temp is 96. I need to take a little bit of a drink because I am, I'm getting parched. All right, let's carry on. So now we're going down. So this is gonna be, hopefully, if the GoPro uh, can continue recording, this is gonna be a, an example of like downhill regenerative braking on the trail. That's what we're here for, GoPro. Don't fuck it up. All right, see, so here we go. I'll let you know if I, I did hit my bike's brakes right, right there because you need, I needed like some, some feathering. So if you got to do like delicate feathering of the brakes, then you want your bike's brakes, but this is regen. Regen, regen, okay. Bikes, brakes. <laughs> you still need some bike brakes. This is, this is steep and I wanna go the opposite way. Oh, oh, oh man. I've fallen down here before doing this. <laughs> Very sketchy going like that, okay. All right, we're moving again. We're going back down, regenerating. So I would say when you're riding around on stuff like this, like you're just laying into the brakes a lot, like quite often, like right now. We need braking, not using the bike's brakes. Oh, 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 oh. did use the bike's brakes right at the end because I got scared. But you can, you can use both of them together. Like when you do regen, and your bike brake, it's like double whammy mayhem braking. Let's test the brakes right here on, okay, regen. We're one foot down, oh, oh, oh. That was all regen. It's sketchy, but. All right, so we're still just regenerating along down the trail through the woods. Oh. Ooh. That was all regen. Oh, right there. It basically stopped me. And you keep going. Oh. 80 phase amps, feeling pretty good. GoPro, please tell me that you're still recording. Hello? All right, so here we go. So in a minute, we'll check our stats and see how much we've regenerated on the trail. Oh, 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 oh. The regen made me skid out there. You gotta be careful of that. Gotta be careful of that. There's gonna be a comment about that. I mean, sometimes you're, you're just hitting your brakes and you skid out and you don't expect it to, so. It is a possible hazard though, when you have regen set up like this. All right, GoPro overheated again. Hopefully we got most of that, I think. So let's start a new screen recording.
in three, two, one, go. All right, so let's look at the stats quick. So we, we used four amp hours, we charged quarter of an amp hour. So we charged some, but the moral of this story, the lesson of today's video is that regen is not about the regen, it's about the braking and the opportunity costs associated with bicycle brake maintenance. And so, like I said, people said in the comments that you're not supposed to use regen to bring your vehicle to a complete stop. And like many of the comments on YouTube, they didn't say why, they just said, they just said, hey, you're dumb, you're doing it wrong. But then they didn't bother to explain what about that is wrong and why. So, I don't know. I mean, let me know in the comments, why are you not supposed to use regen to bring your vehicle to a complete stop? It doesn't seem like, it doesn't seem like it can. It seems like it'll bring it to like an almost complete stop to where you can just like basically put your feet down and stop. But I think it might just be configured like that in Vesk where when it gets to like a certain speed where it seems like the bike is stopped, then it stops the regen. I don't know, but. But here we go, we'll go riding around. I think maybe if we keep moving, um, the GoPro won't overheat. We might have to turn down the brightness here so my phone doesn't go dead. Um, I thought it was gonna rain, but now it doesn't, I don't know. Maybe not. But yeah, so that was regen on the trail with the Buffang geared hub motor and the welded clutch. There's mud shooting off my tires. Wow, those 80 phase amps feel good, buddy. Stop there with my bike's brakes because there's a large truck coming with a boat on a trailer. I don't know, I thought it was gonna rain, but it doesn't seem like it is yet, so let's go ride around, dudes. Let's go, let's keep going. Let's keep regenerating. something for a second. I'm not exactly sure what is back here. It doesn't say no outlet. So maybe we can Wait, my motor is hot. Hot motor. It's a hot day out. It's a hot motor and I hate on a hot day, boys. I don't know if this is gonna go. I don't know if this is. It seems like this is no outlet. Maybe.
can tell a big difference now that I set it to 80 base amps. So, wow. Water's cooling down nicely. Vent holes. Yes. Man, the phase amps make such a big difference. Like, even just five of them. There's, there's cows. Are those billy goats? What are those? And there's a Sasquatch on the fence on the opposite side. I like it. Now where am I? Oh. I know where I am. I haven't been down here for a while. Whoa. Going on an old country Wisconsin e bike ride. Where are we? I don't even know where I am. Sunset Valley. I don't know if we want to be going this way. This might not be the way to go. Whoa. This might not be the way to go. Maybe I know where we are. So guys, I vented the motor because I just like to juice it. And when you vent the motor, you can juice it 50% more. Regenerating. Bikes brakes. Feels like it's freewheeling right here when I hold the throttle like this. So it says it's 110. I'm gonna front motor down this street a little bit and let the vent holes do their work. Because after this, we gotta go fast, buddy. On this next road. like my speedo's okay guys according to that sign I've got so many comments that my speedo is wrong and it's like I've measured my wheel diameter with a tape measure and people will still tell you that it's wrong motor is uh, cooling down a little bit
this is the road that it's gonna be a little bit sketchy but there's no cars coming so we're fine nice Bumped it from 75 to 80 phase amps. That made a big difference. We're cruising. This is a rear motor only. Whoa. The clouds opened up for us, boys, and we get to go further. It was looking sketchy when I first left. Whoa, buddy. Whoa, 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 buddy. There's so many people driving their cars around that are not looking at anything. It's unbelievable. GoPro, hello. GoPro is still going, yes. It's a lot easier to keep the GoPro going when you're going faster. You got some air going. It, it even like sounds different when I change the phase amps. It sounds a little bit different. So, uh, there's this little spider on my GoPro. Get off, dude. Get off of there. Man, this guy, I don't like him. Um, so, when you, when you start doing regen, it is imperative that you have a good torque arm on the motor, or the axle nuts are just going to loosen up in five minutes, and the wheel is going to fall off. So, the solution to that problem is to buy the Grintec Regen Torque Arm, the V7 Regen Torque Arm. So, but I don't have that yet. I've just got a hodgepodge of multiple torque arms, so we're going to tighten this on. So that, that was still on there pretty good. Didn't feel like it came off at all, came loose. So what about this one? Tighten this one up a little bit. That one is still on there. Okay, so. My bike feels a little bit different now that I have like all of these torque arms on there and 
we're doing regen, like you can just tell, like there's a lot more like going on back here in this rear wheel. So I'm just keeping track of that, those axle nuts, making sure they're not coming off. And it seems like they're, it's, it's, it would be a lot easier if I had the V7 torque arm and it was just one torque arm that you can just, you, with the clamping action, but it does seem possible to take multiple torque arms and then like tighten one and then tighten the other one against the first one and then put another one over on this side and tighten that one against everything else and then it starts to be able to stay together. But you should just, it just makes more sense to get the V7 regen torque on. Alright, so let's look at the weather. What, it's not going to be a surprise, is it? Like what, okay, it seems okay. It seems like it's not going to be a surprise. Alright guys, so some other things about regen. Um, <coughs> works good for riding in the street, especially when there's cars and like stop signs and stoplights and people and things where you have to stop and go and stop and go and stop and go frequently. It's very useful because then you don't even have to touch the brake levers. Then you don't have to wear down your brake pads. When you have the throttle set up kind of like an EV, where when you let off the throttle it starts the regen, it's kind of just a natural, it's different, you gotta get used to it, but it's like a natural thing. It's like when you wanna go, hit the throttle. When you wanna start slowing down, start easing up on the throttle. If you wanna slow down hard, let off of the throttle. So one other thing about regen is it's kind of fun, right? Like, um, well, first of all, like, it requires less effort, right? So when I have it set up like this and I can just let off of the throttle and the regen braking engages, like it's just a natural action. Like when you want to start slowing down, the first thing that you do is naturally just let off of the throttle. But then the next thing that you'd normally have to do is reach your hands onto the brakes and start squeezing the brake levers to start slowing down, right? But when you have regen set up like this, it's just one natural input. Like you can use your throttle to go forward. <coughs> you can use the throttle to go and you can use the throttle to slow down and it's all just one like natural. You'd have to try it, but when you try it, it's just really intuitive. It's different. Like maybe if you want to ride your bike, like a bike and pedal and stuff, that might not be how you want it. You know, you might want to set it up some other way with pedal assist or whatever, but the way that I ride, mostly with the throttle, you know, I really like having the throttle set up this way. There's some bugs that are just out here eating me, so, and the GoPro's getting hot, so we gotta keep going. We're gonna go regenerating around. I'm gonna turn down my screen brightness so the phone doesn't go dead. 'Cause GoPro overheated. <clears throat> GoPro. What is going on? Three, two, 
One, go. Hopefully we can see that and sync those up. Jesus. All right. to the side <coughs> to make sure that our screen recordings and our GoPro videos <coughs> are synced up. Let's carry on. We also need to survey the skies to see what the clouds look like. Oh. So we got a little bit of hill right here going on this where we can regenerate and there's probably a big traffic jam log jam down here and we're gonna have to do some kind of crazy e-bike maneuver we're gonna have to invoke pedal privilege <clears throat> i'll show you guys how you do that seems like maybe traffic's kind of moving but we're regenerating we're not in a big hurry pedaling it's okay and as long as there's no people on the sidewalk that's the rules fifteen <clears throat> 15 is the sidewalk speed limit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
I, f I might have forgot to pedal. <clears throat> You're supposed to pedal when you invoke pedaling privilege. That's how you do it. But sometimes I forget to pedal. Regen is great for on the streets. When there's lots of stopping and going. Motors at 90, 89. Gary Fisher. cruising boys good day to be cruising I saw a fat tire obstacle course back there that I wasn't aware of. We're gonna have to go look at that in a second. On the way back.
I'm still <clears throat> still running a noisy boy in sensorless mode. I haven't had a chance to figure out what his problem is. But it works pretty good in Basque. The sensor was mode. do the dangerous oh the dangerous strategy of opening the GoPro door to keep it cooler see if that helps So people have been telling me that I should get my dual hub motors on a on a flip ski dual controller where it's two controllers built into one for dual motors. I don't know. If flip ski sends me one, I'll make some videos and do it. But I don't know that I want to buy one. I don't use the front motor that much. I used to have both motors hooked up to one throttle, but the front motor is just really noisy. It was my main problem with it. It's cool having it's cool having two motors, but the front one is really noisy. And I didn't like hearing it in videos all the time. And you don't really need it all the time. It's fun having the front motor just for like accelerate acceleration. In the, in the winter, it's fun. If you're going through the sand, it's nice. If you had a cargo bike, dual hubs would be nice. But when you get the rear motor on a controller like the flip ski, you don't need the front one as much. I 
I need, I need to set up a way to charge my phone while I'm riding so I can record these screen recordings without my phone going dead all the time. I'm so paranoid about this GoPro overheating today. All right, so going down this, like we can just slowly go down it. I am braking, this is regen. All right, so we got no brakes, no bike brakes. And that was a steep little chunk right here. And it basically, it brought me to a complete stop. I can't see my phone screen, but I can see that it's the motor's at 109. When I look closely, <laughs> let's see here. So, yeah, it's hot out, even with the vent holes. Do the front motor for a minute just to try and cool things down a little bit. Forget that you're using the front motor, they can totally lose it. Okay, so what are we at here? 101. All right, we're good to go here. All right, so at the bottom of this hill to the right, I want to go up there. There's like an off road paradise of some sort. Let's see here. GoPro, are you still going, buddy? 20%. All right, GoPro, let's hang in there, hang in there, GoPro. with the motor temperature is 101.
was interesting. <clears throat> I think I've been up there like once in my life, like a long time ago. And it looks completely foreign to me. sounds it's kind of fun it makes braking kind of fun is one thing about regen um let's see here uh, gopro are you still going yeah so i imagine this is like it's getting hot Battery's going dead or something. I gotta look at my phone. I can't see it. Okay, I don't know. I mean, I think this might be it, guys. But that was one other thing I wanted to mention is that regen. It kind of makes braking fun, like normally when you're braking it's kind of annoying like you gotta you have to like react and like grab your brake levers and slam on the brakes but when you have regen it's just like a natural thing and it's kind of fun when you do regen braking there's something about it that makes braking fun it's hard to hard to describe but so gopro is gonna go dead it's got seven percent it's gonna go dead like any second so like and subscribe I'm gonna go back home. I need to charge all of these devices. And it's just really hot out. I'm parched. But thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. It's been a good day doing regen. Screen recording has disappeared because my phone died. Okay, 
so I'll just try and hodgepodge together what I can here with an overheating GoPro and a dying bike battery and a dead phone. We are, we are no longer in the best tool. We are just cruising blind. Um, I need to zip up my pouch with one hand awkwardly. Oh. What is it with these things? Come on, come on, buddy, come on. Holy buckets. Okay, so once again, regen can be useful when you have the throttle set up like I do because then it's almost like a parking brake. It's almost like a parking brake and like your bike is more stable when regen is like just active and I can kind of dink around. I don't have to like hold on to the bars. Regen kind of like holds you there. It can be useful in many ways that you would not envision. stock controller it's just like an on and off button it's pretty wild oh dragonflies all right here we go we're going back Somebody was saying I should try a regen with my front motor, and I don't know about that. It's, it would be like pretty dangerous. I think that's one thing about regen, though, that cannot be understated is it makes braking fun, and it's not. Or at least it's not as annoying when you have to brake with regen. At least for me, personally. It makes kind of a cool sound when you're regen braking. It's like...
So if you want to modulate the brake really, really finely, like it works a lot better with your normal brakes. Just but for just like brute braking force, where you're just like slowing down a lot. Okay, so this GoPro battery has 43% left. We should be able to make it home with this one, boys. Oh, let's close the pouch. We gotta get going home because it's it seems like seems like it's going to rain at some point. So here we go. If you're still if you're still with me, make sure you like and subscribe if you're not already. So then we can be buddies forever. Let's regen up to the stop sign. Takes a little bit long, a little bit longer than normal braking, the regen. like the the battery is probably getting lower or else the motor is getting hot um we're doing some front motor here too oh we're also going up a large hill man it's windy wow
right, dudes. There's some like car behind me that's gonna run me over. So if, if I don't upload any more videos, that's what happened. Man, there was some car that was going slow behind me for like, like two miles there. I was like, what is going on? Those cars are so annoying. Alright, make sure you like and subscribe. If you made it this far, then my fucking GoPro is still gone. Make sure you like and subscribe. Peace out. Thanks for watching. Regen's cool.